We're live. <laughs> well, good evening and welcome. Welcome again to God is in the House and our book and Bible study um, with Embracing Trust by Joanna Weaver, The Art of Letting Go and Holding On to a Forever Faithful God. So we're picking this back up. I know we've had a, a couple of weeks at least with break up t time apart. Uh, summertime, family, celebration, all types of events that occur. And so, so we've been a bit of a break and uh, now we're going to come back to at least this week. And then we'll have to see how the rest of our weeks go according to the summer. Uh, a lot of different things that, uh, that uh, can come along. So we'll keep you posted on that. And thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we just appreciate the fact that you do set aside time, whether you're in person right now or joining us later, um, you know, as you go through the whole thing. I want to start again, and I know you're familiar with it. We've done this a few times. Um, but I want to open up first with, you know, a, this general prayer that uh, would deal with any demonic that might be... Um, might be wanting to wreak havoc, whether it's for you or for anyone around here, uh, but we are the ones with the authority um, because we <laughs> because we are the ones who carry the name and the fullness of Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, and we have that authority because of Jesus who has given that to us. So we'll just, and Father, we just we just open up. We just want to honor you tonight. Lord, as you, and and insert your name again if you've not done this before. So, And I'm going to pick on Ralph once again. He's a good sport. And so I'm going to say, Lord, as you and Ralph are establishing an interactive connection, and every one of us um, tonight, I also ask that you would appoint representatives for all evil spiritual forces that are present. We command all evil spiritual forces to be bound to the representatives that the Lord Jesus has appointed. You will only manifest and communicate with each other as Jesus allows and requires. You may not assist each other in any way, and you must be cut off from all outside spiritual forces. You must now return to Jesus and to Ralph, or to insert your name, everything that you have stolen from him or from you, you must be stripped away from and release every part of Ralph, every part of you, my, our mind. You must be stripped of all your schemes, plans, agendas, and orders, and lay these at the feet of the Lord Jesus now. Lord Jesus, we do submit to you the issue of compliance. We ask that you would deal with all evil spiritual forces that fail to comply. And in the name of Jesus, we command all evil spiritual forces, at the moment that you fail to comply, you will immediately go to the true Lord Jesus and deal with him directly. None of this dealing with, we don't have to deal with you. You go to the true Lord Jesus and you deal with him directly in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to thank uh, any any of you who have submitted uh, requests for prayer for whether it be for family, for family members or friends, that type of thing. And and uh, we think of uh, we think of there's a young man out there by the name of Stephen who lives in British Columbia and and his girlfriend. So um, Stephen's girlfriend has been experiencing difficult issues with health, mental wellness, um, lack of sleep, a, a variety of different issues that is affecting her and keeping her from being able to be healthy and well enough to work her job. So we just want to bring that before you, Father. Lord, we just thank you that because of who you are, Jesus, all things are possible through you. So, Lord, we just commit uh, this this friend, this girlfriend of Stephen's, we commit, and Stephen as well, into your hands. Lord, we say that you know exactly who they are, where they're at, and what is needed to accomplish um, a completed healing of freedom, all areas that need that need to be 
ministered to by you, the true Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I thank you. We just place them before you. We say, we say Lord, would you just meet them right where they're at? Meet this, this gal right where she's at. And Holy Spirit, would you pour out your amazing love and presence, Lord, Amen. in such a way that there is no other spirit except the true spirit of Jesus that would be allowed to speak to her, minister to her, but it would be your presence that fills her and surrounds her, that she would be made whole and healthy and set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are the all-powerful, almighty God, and we declare that you are healer, deliverer, you are savior, you are so much and so many so many things to every single individual but all that we have need is found in you Jesus and so we thank you Lord that as we submit Stephen before you as well God that he will continue to seek you and to seek the truth of who you are and the reality of how to live and walk according to the ways of Jesus but to follow you no matter what laying aside every other encumbrance, laying aside every other distraction, that his first focus would and first love would be you, Jesus. Amen. So we thank you for that, not only for these two, but also for each and every one who may be joining us tonight. We thank you, Lord, that it is by your grace and your mercy that we, that we are here, that we walk and move, and we have our being in you, in Jesus, the only true God. So Rayamo Koremesu Kurabe Halea Kumbo Shukaramota Lai Ramo Kulamora Hare Kuma Shekolomoto Kim Baketa Yaramo Rea Kalea Hare Akusha Kunamahia Kunamate Alleluia Jesus Korea Moria Shukurea Hahi Jesus, 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 King of Kings and Lord of Lords, bright and morning star. All things are placed under your feet. You have accomplished every single <laughs> you have made a public spectacle of the enemy and all his works has already been looked after and dealt with on that pole, on, on, on that cross. It's over, it's done because of what you have done. The blood of Jesus Christ and your stripes have covered it all. So Lord, we just bring everyone and everything that needs to be, that needs to be made right, all things that are not just right right now, we bring that before you. Because you are the one who makes everything right. You have done it. You've already done that. So, Lord, we apply. We apply the absolute victory yes. that is in you, Jesus. Only in you. Not by us fighting our own fight. But you are the one who fights our battles for us. Mm -hmm. So we place it all at your feet. And we thank you for amazing reports, Lord. Amazing reports. And I bring before you, Father, even just those in our own family, our own personal family, our son Jason. Um, we've just, uh, you know, he's uh, he's going through some issues with MS, and uh, some of the there are extra there are extra expenses around that. So our daughter-in-law and uh, family have given permission that we can uh, put up that GoFundMe page. I have posted that last night on my own personal um, Facebook page, um, and then uh, so you'll be able to find that there. But to if the Lord so leads you to make a donation of whatever you're able to towards helping them with the added expenses surrounding all that's needed in the care um, for for the treatment. Uh, it may be such things, and I don't even know what all they are, except um, I do know that cooling vests for people with MS is is very, almost a vital necessity. It's not a luxury because of the way heat affects the body. And so there's, uh, I, I don't even have a list for you, but nonetheless, just put that out to you. Because uh, if the Lord so touches and moves you, then please do. Just, uh, you know, you can be in touch with with us, with myself, um, and I can pass on, you know, to the family um, what it is you would like to do. If you would like to make a donation 
um, through the GoFundMe page, then that would be your best bet. Um, and also for Ray, you know, I mean, as most of you know, he's been having some health issues and battles, and that, um, you know, the enemy, the enemy's not too happy with all that's being accomplished in the realm of the kingdom, but it's our God who has the final say. And nonetheless, the health issues surrounding heart health, and we're waiting on, uh, waiting on him to get a call so that he can get the, an angiogram done, and then, you know, more can be done, except, of course, for the uncommon miracle that the Lord could perform, and that would be our first preference, uh, an uncommon and notable miracle to that heart would be totally recreated and renewed and uh, just, God, you are the God who speaks the word and you create. So it's not a matter of even recreate, it's creating new, create <laughs> create in me a clean heart, a pure heart. Create in Raymond a absolutely new functional heart as it should be the way it was designed so that his destiny will be reached. It will not be thwarted in the mighty name of Jesus. So thank you for that. And if there's anything else that you you know, wanted to um, put out there for, you know, we've got Ralph is manning the... Um, the social media station, shall we say, um, as well as many other things. So if there are other specific requests, um, something that has come to mind just as we were praying was that um, someone with a knee issue, I believe that there's um, someone with a, a knee problem, I don't have a specific, but that the Lord does want to touch you and heal and even to set fresh that knee, whatever the issue may be. So in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, that you would just touch, you would touch this one or more than one who may have knee, knee pain, knee injury, um, need even a new knee, that because you are the creator and because you are the God who still does miracles today, we ask you and we thank you for for a miracle for that person or persons that needs a knee replacement, a new knee, a healed up knee. And we thank you, Lord, that you are the God, the only one that can do this in your strength and in your power, not in our own strength and might. So we, we just thank you that you will do that for you love each and every one of your people so much. And we bless you for that, Lord. And thank you in Jesus' name. <laughs> All right, I guess we better finally get down to it here. Um, but we, where we left off, I, you know, from our last time together, in the, we were, we were looking at, it's chapter 8 in the book of Embracing Trust, and we didn't quite make it through all the way because these can be quite long chapters to get through. Um, so, um, for, I know that uh, those of you, unless you have the book yourself, you wouldn't know what page. But for those of us who are here, um, it would be at page 134 that we're starting starting up again with that sort of almost three quarters of the way through the chap this chapter. And this is the unoffendable heart. Um, a little recap, just to touch base um, with, you know, where we left off a bit uh, about uh, the unoffendable heart. I'm just going to quickly, so maybe it'll help you sort of catch up to or w remind you sort of what we were talking about here. Um, so you, it's about forgiveness is kind of, kind of where we're kind of talking about here. Um, <laughs> there's often some unconscious thoughts that may seem reasonable and are certainly believed by many people. But when we choose to live by our understanding rather than by the truth of God's word, we walk through life chained to our offenders. Mm -hmm. Dragging our hurt wherever we go, unbeknownst to us many times, we've made ourselves the real prisoner. Not them, it's us who becomes the real prisoner. But praise God that you and I can choose a different response. Because of Jesus, we don't have to wait for someone to apologize. And we don't have to work up the desire to forgive. 
Instead, we can offer up the mercy that is given to us by Jesus. And that's Ephesians 2, verses 4 to 5. For he wants to empower us to look beyond the offense like he did when he was falsely accused and sentenced to die. And this is how 1 Peter 2, 22 and 23 puts his dis response, and they des he describes it. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. And when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. Good lesson for us humans. Um, and when he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. See, and that's the secret. Jesus entrusted himself to the only righteous judge. Rather than lashing back at those who would mistreat us and are trying to then we try to avenge every wrong, or living behind a shield of prickly defensiveness that we can do, most of us humans, we can trust that God is at work even in our pain. And though it might take us some time, as we choose to let go of offense, it's a choice, and do it again and again, because we get to practice, the Spirit develops within us what Francis Frangipane calls the unoffendable heart of Jesus. A heart that doesn't wait for another person's repentance to bestow mercy, but follows the instructions found in Colossians 3.13, which says, Make allowances for each other's faults, and forgive anyone who offends you. Amen. Remember, the Lord forgave you, and so you must forgive others. Mm -hmm. Now we step into our, our, for tonight, and it's the subtitle here is Hammering Out Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Hammering it out. Hmm, it must take some work. <laughs> Hammering it out. We get to practice again? I think it sounds that way. So many years ago, this is the, the author now, she's writing, a church friend and I had a falling out. I don't remember the details, but I do remember the pain. Her rejection felt so undeserved. I'd lie in bed at night trying to come up with ways that I could remedy the situation. But my friend was not interested in continuing our friendship. She was done with me, she said, and that was the cruelest blow of all. I tried to forgive her, but to be honest, I was offended at her offendedness. The fact that we attained, attended the same church where my husband pastored made the situation especially awkward. But somehow we managed to avoid each other without revealing our unspoken feud. Or at least we thought we did. Looking back, I'm pretty sure our fellow uh, church members felt the tension I mean, you know what it's like. You can feel the tension between people when things are not quite as friendly. They must have sensed the distance between us and heard the shift in tone at the mention of the other person's name. For when one part of the body suffers, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 36, all the parts suffer with it. We can't harbor a grudge against another Christian without it affecting and eventually infecting the body of Christ. Which is another reason the New Testament places so much emphasis on forgiveness. And in Hebrews 12.15 it says, See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. That seems to be a warning there for us. Mm -hmm. Like poisonous ground cover, the dark spirit of offense sends out tendrils seeking validation. And those tendrils can easily take root. Whether in the form of a prayer request, a not-so-innocent asking for advice, or a simple, the simple need-to-vent excuse. We spread bitterness when we ask people to choose sides. Stop and think about that. And I know we're all guilty of this at some point in our lives. Some, some more recently than others. But uh, at any rate, it causes us to take a good look at our, at our choices, at our own stuff. 
Worst of all, when we hold a grudge, it spreads to other relationships. For you cannot harbor offense against one person without becoming suspicious and cynical of everyone else. Though God was patient with me as I navigated the broken relationship, he made it clear I couldn't remain angry with my friend and still fulfill his purposes. Not because I was the pastor's wife, but because I was his child. Together, God and I began the hard work of letting go. But it wasn't easy. Forgiveness is rarely a one-time decision. Instead, it's a process. And it always takes longer than we think it will. At least that was my experience, says the author. Just when I had thought that I had worked through the hurt and released the offense... Something new would happen, and I'd pick it up again. And I think we all can relate to that well enough. Max Licato um, reminds us in his book, You'll Get Through This, he says, Forgiveness vacillates like this. It has fits and starts, good days and bad, anger intermingled with love, irregular mercy. We, made, we make progress only to make a wrong turn. Step forward and fall back. But this is okay. When it comes to forgiveness, all of us are beginners. No one owns any secret formula to this. And as long as you're trying to forgive, then you are forgiving. It's when you no longer try that bitterness sets in. Hard as it was to work through to forgiveness, I was determined to keep trying. And as I continued to ask the Lord to change my heart, he began to give me perspective on our situation. Rather than focusing on my hurt and anger, I started to consider that my friend, might, might, she just might be hurting as well. My prayers took on a whole new tone as God began to give me a fresh love for her that didn't require reciprocation. Gratefully, she also allowed God to work in her heart. And over time, our relationship healed. I came out of that experience with a fresh determination not to be so vulnerable to the sca scandal on traps of the enemy. For I want the unoffendable love described in 1 Corinthians 13.5 that says, It is not irritable, this is talking about love, not irritable or touchy, it does not hold grudges, and it will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. So just, just think about how different our friendships, our marriages, and our relationships with our children, with co-workers, uh, would be if we focused on even just these three things. Not being irritable or touchy. Ouch. Not holding grudges. Hmm hardly noticing when others do it wrong. Wow. We'd not only be more like Jesus, we'd also be free to love and let live. Rather than un umpiring people's lives, constantly calling strikes and foul balls on their actions, and don't we know that? Every day we hear it, we see it, and perhaps we've been a part. Or in our internal our internal judgments are going on. So rather than umpiring people's lives, constantly calling strikes and foul balls on their actions, we'd be able to leave the judging up to God. Hmm. Trusting that He would work in the hearts of other people because we've allowed Him to work in our own. And in the process, opening our hearts to a love that always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Reflecting the unoffendable love of Jesus that has been so richly lavished on us, wouldn't that be amazing? And the next little subtitle is Being a Good Forgiver. Mm -hmm. Oh, yay! Mm -hmm. Look at, we just still keep on practicing, don't we? Being a Good Forgiver. <clears throat> I wish you were dead, 
That's basically what the prodigal son told his father in the familiar story found in Luke 15, 11, and 12. I imagine those words must have hit hard, nearly knocking the father over. Teenage logic assumed, I'll get an inheritance one day, why not now? But I have a feeling the tension and disrespect had been building for months, if not years. The boy couldn't wait to get away, far, far away. And I'm just, I'm skipping a section and we'll come back to it, so I'm popping over to 139. Swallowing his hurt, the father did what his heart said to do. He emptied his savings, liquidated his stocks, and gave a share of the proceeds to the brash young man standing before him. The same son he'd cradled in his lap, the child who, who'd sing him silly songs and promise to love him forever. The transaction was done almost before it began. With his bags already packed, and as soon as he received the money, the young man set off to a far and distant country with no plans to ever come back. Months passed, then a year. Time softened the pain, but it didn't diminish the father's love, which kept him watching and waiting for his son's return. Until that day when he saw a familiar shape moving towards him in the, on the horizon. The father stepped off the porch and made his way down the road. Was it him? Could it be? Slowly but steadily, the figure kept, kept coming towards him. Head downcast, feet bare, shuffling in the dust. Clothing ragged and dirty, hanging on an impossibly skinny frame. Though the young man had changed and was still far away, somehow the father knew that it was his son. And so the father ran, heart bursting, feet pounding, he ran. He threw his arms around the dusty stranger as he kissed him and cried. At first the son melted into his father's arms. But then, as if remembering something he'd come to do, he dropped to his knees before his father and tried to speak between his tears. Something about sinning against heaven and no longer being worthy of the family name. But the father heard nothing. His heart was dancing too loud. Quick, bring some clothes, he cried to his servants as he pulled the boy to his feet. Don't forget the shoes. Oh, and remember the ring. But father, I mean sir, the shame son said, stumbling over the words, I'm so very sorry. The father took the tear-streaked face in his hands. And maybe this is you. Or maybe this is your son or daughter returning. The father took the tear-streaked face in his hands. Oh, my boy. Plenty of time for all of that, he said with a smile. Right now it's time to celebrate. You're home, my son. You're home. So it's it's quite, uh, you know, because if we're looking at that story from this perspective and just getting a glimpse, you know, more in that picture form and bringing it a little bit more to our day and understanding, what, you know, as far as, the father and speaking to the son, it kind of causes you to stop and reflect and to consider our own reactions if that was one of ours. Or if you're the one who's trying to make your way home, it would it could bring you a whole different perspective that you're not going to be pushed away. Your Heavenly Father will not turn you away. He will be so overjoyed to see you. His heart, his heart will be dancing so loud to see you, his son or his daughter, coming back to him. Amen. Now there's a little section here uh, that she's titled, Nine Ways to Cultivate an Unoffendable Heart. Can we? Yes. I want to go back. Sure. <clears throat> We're sorry. Uh, 
when we were in this section here, mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about not, uh, and this is on page 136. Okay. It talks about not being irritable or touchy. Right. Not holding grudges. Yes. Hardly noticing when others do it wrong. Yes. <clears throat> we'd not only, we'd not only be more like Jesus, we'd also be free to love and let live. Yes. Being able, unoffendable is what's really critical is having your own identity, knowing your identity, and who knowing you who you are in Christ, yes. knowing that you're loved, yes. knowing that you're That's forgiven. Right. You're secure. That, yeah. You're secure in that. Yes. And you, you don't easily take offense. Uh, I've right. had people apology, apologize yes. for offending me. And I, <laughs> oh, I, I didn't notice. Right. Uh, no, that's true. Yeah. And it's not that I mean, it's somebody special, but no, I, no. I do have a my personal experience yes. and, and my new birth experience. Mm -hmm. I really had a, uh, a look at the Father's heart or mm -hmm. a revelation of it to right. me. Yes. So uh, yes. I'm confident in who I am. Yeah, and, yeah, and and hard to offend. I've told people that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't notice. I, I'm hard to offend. Uh, yes, yeah. But it's because I have a real strong sense of my identity in Christ. Right. Yeah, no, and that's good. That's good because I know that you know there's different times somebody say to me, "Oh, I'm so sorry," like whatever it was, and I thought, "Okay," like I didn't, it, it didn't, I was, yeah. I didn't even think anything of it. Right. You know, same thing. It's just like, huh. But, you know, at that same time, which is great, Amen. at that same time, then it also speaks of the other person's heart who really doesn't want to offend. Yes. You know, the inner nature of that, the inner Christ in them, Holy Spirit, is catching them on something that maybe for them was the Lord wanted to teach them. Yeah. And it maybe not have offended you or me or affected us, but but it did touch their heart. Yes, and that's right. Yeah. And that's I believe Holy Spirit teaching us. Oh yeah, and that's awesome. and the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Yeah, it's you know when we walk in the fear of the Lord, um, we quickly receive any any sense of a correction or that the Lord wants to make in yeah. our lives. And yeah, I've, it, yeah, I've appreciated that several different times yeah. because it represented that that person had an experience with the Holy yeah, Spirit that's right. and was relating to it yeah. and was doing what was right to do. That's right. And and uh, I'm sure you've done it too. Oh, yeah. And that was you encouraged them yeah. in that they had heard from the Spirit. That's right. And they were doing the thing they ought to have yes. done. Yeah. And thank you. For, right. For, yeah, that's right. Encourage them. That that's right. They're moving in the spirit. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, you know, and and I know I've been on that receiving end, mm -hmm. and it's like oh, it's a relief. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, oh. but it's a relief, you yeah. know, when but still, because of that deep love for the Lord Himself, Amen. then oh, okay, and. There's no, there's no penalty involved, yeah, so to speak. You know. Yeah. 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 So the, no. Is there anything else? No. No. Okay. No. no. That's no. But that's really good. Yeah. Because it's, it's so true. So now the author, she's tucked in here nine ways to cultivate an unoffendable heart, and that's right after beside page one thirty six. Yeah. Um, and Luke seventeen one where it says. The way Jesus says it, it is impossible that offenses won't come. So how do we cultivate the unoffendable heart of Jesus? Well, here's some things that have helped her, she said, and I think it would be helpful for every one of us, um, to avoid the enemy's scandalon traps, those ones that he wants to just trip you up, distract you, take you away, and get trapped in that offense. Um... So one of, one of the first things is, you know, to ask ask God to rewire your soul. 
We all have emotional triggers and weak spots that make us irritable and touchy. Ask the Lord to help you identify them and then come up with ways to respond rather than react. He wants to give you a patient, genuine love that isn't easily ruffled, rewiring your soul so that you hardly notice when someone says or do does something wrong. Kind of like what we were talking about. And then, secondly, ask Holy Spirit to reveal unresolved issues in, you know, in your heart, in your life. Sometimes overreactions in the present are rooted in the past, and mm -hmm. often that so. Oh, yeah. For instance, authority issues with your dad might trans transfer over to your boss. When something awakens a charged response in you, ask the Lord to show you what's really going on behind that. What's really going on? In Psalm, you know, the reference here is Psalm 139, 23 and 24. If needed, talk to a godly counselor or mentor to help you work through that past so that you can move forward into your future. Thirdly, try to deal with hurt as it happens. Do not let offenses pile up. Though it takes time to work through the emotions, don't try to do it alone. Take your hurt to Jesus. You know, and there is the scripture that says, do not let the sun go, go down on your anger, right? Don't let, you know, because, and for this very reason, so that things don't pile up and we don't get rooted and bitter rooted. So she says, uh, yeah, so, so we, we just want to ask the Lord what's really going on behind, you know, that, that issue. And if it's needed, talk to that godly counselor or mentor, like we said. And trying to deal with the hurt as it happens and not letting those offenses pile up and not, you know, it does take time to work through emotions, that's for sure. But then we take that hurt to Jesus. And together with, with him, you know, we can bring that to him and determine if the pain is legitimate. Sometimes it's not. Together, oh, pardon me. And whether it requires biblical confrontation, as found in Matthew 18:15. Either way, allow God to help you walk towards forgiveness quickly so that the offense does not grow and does not spread. And then fourthly, choose not to remember the sins that are done against you. It's a choice. Choose not to remember the sins done against you. To forgive and forget is not humanly possible. But with Holy Spirit's help, we can choose not to remember. Mm. We can choose not to keep bringing it up over and over and over, but no, we forgive. We let the Lord look after that, just as God does with our own sin in Hebrews 8.12. Rather than rehashing a wrong that's been forgiven, when a painful memory remerges, take it to Jesus and purposely place it under his blood. Each time you lay down the hurt, its power and its sting will lessen. And I will attest to that mm -hmm. many times. You know, as time passes and we keep taking it back to the Lord and every time there's another layer of something pops up, um, another layer of a painful memory mm -hmm. and emotion, take it to Him. Mm -hmm. And He's so faithful. And over time, some, and she's right, as she, you know, it says, it can take some time. And for these memories and all these things and the emotions that are attached, um, because we are first attached to Jesus, Amen. then we can choose to also sever the emotional attachments to that person that we are carrying the offense. Mm -hmm. We can choose to sever and we break every emotional tie that is tied to this, to the that past sin and offense. We break the emotional tie between um, you know, between us and that other person. Every ungodly emotional tie, we break the power of that thing. We cut it off. In fact, we can divorce that. Amen. And say we, we issue divorce decrees Amen. against those ungodly and those emotions and memories that want to keep coming back. And cut that off because of the authority we have through Amen. Jesus who lives in us. Yeah. 
And fifthly, we can refuse to be defensive. Again, a choice, refuse to be defensive. We all want to protect ourselves and stand up and defend our position, but no, refuse to be that defensive and on the defensive. Be open to correction and criticism, even when it hurts. There's a bit of humility that comes with that. Proverbs 27, 6 says, and then seek to understand where people are coming from. Listen as they share their side of the situation, and if appropriate, calmly share your own side. Otherwise, you want to keep your mouth shut. Um, when, uh, when someone offers an opinion, don't immediately reject it. Ask for time to prayerfully consider what they've said. For God himself might just be trying to speak to you. And then, was there something? No. Yeah, that... <coughs> Um, yeah, they put that there. Uh, you know, refuse to be defensive. Yes. But the other half of that is uh, refuse to justify yourself. You stand That's before right. the Lord That's justified. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. No, that's because we're yeah, we are all guilty of having. And yep justified ourselves that's right trying to not accept the fact that we goofed or made an error or something that's right i want to be, come across in your sight as yes. being goody two shoes so that's perfect right. and wonderful that, that's right and that i i'm more perfect than that yeah that's not true not yeah <laughs> only god justifies right that's true and sixth point try to believe the best about people if we're not careful, mismanaged hurt can make us cynical about everyone. But negativity biases cause us to miss potential gifts. Determine to give grace in every situation. For our love should be ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. And that's in 1 Corinthians 13, 7 Amplified. And then point seven, refuse to pick up other people's grudges. Mm. How many times we can pick up a grudge and offense on behalf of someone else and make it our own? That happens more than we can know. I was in a situation some years ago uh, as an elder in a church. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone misunderstood a thing that the pastor had said. Right took an offense yes. and multiplied the offense and then right. all their friends became offended right. and ultimately wound up with the uh, enough families got, took the offense together yes. and uh, resulted in the pastor having to leave. Yes. And that was a tragedy because this, yes. this man was a blessing to that congregation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. they let multiplied the, the grudges. People That's took true. on the same offense. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and that happens more than anybody would care to admit in many churches. Yeah. You know, we have seen it happen in several, unfortunately. Mm. And, um, yeah, the, you know, and then, then different ones all band together and either the pastor goes or they do. Yeah. You know, especially if it's a Board run church, shall we say? Not yeah. only that, there are other times I'm sure, but that seems to be the most common one yeah. um, that can run a pastor out. Now, let's face it too, there are those who ought not to be in that pulpit, but for the most part, it's that, that sort of that group mentality that um, takes over and either the people leave or they kick the pastor out. Yeah and cause him to leave. So refusing to pick up other people's grudges. When we get offended on behalf of someone else, we run the risk of making matters worse for everyone, especially ourselves. Mm. While we should pray for the situation and, if possible, promote reconciliation, our primary role is clear. As far as it depends on you, live at peace 
with everyone. Amen. And that's found in Romans 12, 18. And number eight, memorize related scriptures. Part of rewiring my responses um, has included repeating James 1, 19 often. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Our fallen nature is reactionary. It's allowing people and situations to determine our responses rather than God's words. Pardon me, God's word. Look for verses to strengthen any weak places so that you can become and I can become more like Christ. And last but not least, number nine, pray blessings over your, in quotations, mm. enemies. It's completely counterintuitive to our flesh, but we've been called to bless and not to curse, according to 1 Peter 3, 9. Learning to bless and pray for those who have hurt me rather than complain about them to God has revolutionized my life and my heart. Rather than waiting for people and situations to change, God has used the exercise of repaying evil with blessing to change me. Amen. Amen. So the Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Amen. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> yes. Uh, like you, you've heard me say it, and, yeah. <laughs> and I've taught it from the pulpit here a few times. But uh, the, uh, God's desire is that we pray the blessing, mm -hmm. uh, the, it's called the Aaronic blessing, right. out of Numbers chapter 6, mm -hmm. begins in verse 24. But that, God the Father instructed Moses that that prayer, or that blessing, should be prayed over all of his people yes. every single day. Yeah. And if you have, if you have a hard time praying, pray that. Yes. You don't know what to pray for. That, well, that's right. That's a good model. Yes. Yeah, it's a great model because yes. you know that the Father wants it to happen. Yeah. And because He wants it to happen, He will honor. He, he will word. honor yes. the prayer. So yeah. you can pray that blessing. True. Uh, over good. anyone at any time. And that's true. That's yeah, a good. It's, it's for me. It's a daily prayer. <laughs> You re regularly get included. Well, yippee! Yeah. <laughs> daily, a pretty well. That's, if I said daily, I might uh, miss might have missed a day here. Or there. I meant, yeah, that's but, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but no, that you know what? I that's really good because that does make it simple for everybody. No. You know, if people don't have a clue how to start, where to start, that's your model right there. Yeah, and we know that. The Lord is pleased with that because He's the guy that wrote it. You know, yeah. our Father wrote that, yeah, and gave that instruction. So, yeah, that, that's yes. definitely a very good, yeah. very good example. Yeah. And so the next little subtitle here says, "Forgiveness is available for all." Did you know that? Do you believe that? This story, she said, and she's talking about the prodigal son again. And that's on page one forty for us moves me so deeply because it depicts the family reunion available to every one of us. It's a picture of the ever-reaching love of God that is ours when we come to our senses, like the prodigal did, mm -hmm. and finally head home. But it's also an example of the grace of God, pardon me, of the grace God gives to the offended and the offender alike when we choose to do life His way. Grace to forgive and grace to repent, both. As we access his power to look beyond our hurt and love the person, we no longer seek vindication, but we work towards real reconciliation instead. The father's forgiveness didn't happen the day that his son came home. It started the moment the boy walked away. It followed the young man to a distant country. It watched with sad eyes as he squandered his wealth. Though the son was absent and rebellious, forgiveness was already planning a reconciliation, mm -hmm. watching and waiting for the prodigal to come home. When the young man finally rep repents in Luke 15:21, and suggests that he be made a servant instead of a son, 
The father interrupts with these words. Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. That's verses 22 to 24 in Luke. That's, that's such an image of the Father's heart. Yes, it is. Of the Father's heart. Not, not just to forgive and let mm -hmm. the Son kind of sneak in the back door. No. But to welcome Him. That's right. With open arms. That's right. No condemnation, no, no shame, condemnation. no guilt. Exactly. Yeah. It's like uh, Hebrews four sixteen says, Let us therefore yes. come to the... Uh, oh boy, now all of a sudden, I, let us therefore... Come, bo oh, come boldly to come the boldly, throne. yeah, come boldly to the throne of grace, yeah. that we may obtain mercy yes. and grace to help. Yeah. Well, when do you need mercy? When you messed up. That's right. And yeah, and right away, you're restored. Yeah. And uh, if necessary, mm -hmm. there may be a, uh, a an educational period to follow from the father. That's as right. As you relearn sure. the lesson, but that's right. That's true. Yep. But yeah. you're restored. To, That's right. And uh, yeah, and, and we have seen too many situations in churches yes. where someone did cause an offense. Yeah, did ask for forgiveness, right. repented, right. asked for forgiveness. Yeah, and then we're given the right foot of fellowship and they That's booted out. I know. It's and they so were not allowed. No yes. one was of a sufficient character to restore that one. I know. To a, I can't imagine how much pain that causes the Father's heart when oh, that happens. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, in the Emmanuel process that we've, that we've learned with, uh, you know, from, uh, through Larry and Becky, right. the Emmanuel, um, and it's like a key that always stands out for me is like, the Father, he, our Lord, He's always happy to see us. Yeah. And it's like this prodigal. Yeah. He's always happy to see us, no matter what we've done and screwed up on. He's always happy to see us. Amen. He's not. You go to your room. He's not that. Yeah. He, he's more than happy. He welcomes us. Yeah. And like we thought that that word epipipto. Yeah. The Father gives you, grab. Doesn't matter how bad you smell. He grabs you. That's around right. the neck and. You, Gives yes. you a kiss on the neck yeah, and a yeah. big hug. And just holds you close. Yeah. And holds you close. Doesn't care that you smell like the pig bed. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yes. So each item that the Father bestows indicates God's heart of radical forgiveness. For the gifts restored everything the young man had lost. The robe reinstated his dignity. The ring reestablished his authority. The sandals returned his identity, and the fattened calf declared his worth. Amen. That's pretty good. I like that. Amen. Sadly, such mercy isn't always appreciated, as we just talked about. Yeah. Especially when it's granted to somebody else. In Luke fifteen twenty-five to thirty-two, we read that response of the older brother, the son who'd stayed home to take care of the fields. Deeply offended by the lavish love showered on his undeserving brother, according to him, yeah. by his father, the older son spewed out his own mismanaged hurt. So he had stuff in his own heart and life that needed dealt with. Mm. And we see that he spewed out all this stuff uh, that was actually lying underneath and in his own heart. Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. He's a little... A little testy with his own dad, you know. Mm. Yet you never gave me an open, pardon me, a young goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, he's almost like this son of yours, as if he's, you know, yeah. has squandered your property, your property with prostitutes, uh, with prostitutes come home, you kill the fat calf for him. The father's reply was one of infinite patience and understanding. My son, he says in verse 31, you are always with me, and everything that I have is yours. With these words, I hear the Heavenly Father reassuring our hearts 
that his love for others in no way diminishes Amen. his love for us. Amen. Instead of living at a distance, slaving or working for our salvation or working for what we get, instead of instead of um, living at a distance, slaving in the fields to earn our father's favor, older brothers are also invited to come home. No need to compete, no need to compare, no need to be offended, for there are more than enough robes, more than enough rings and sandals and fattened calves to go around. Enough love, enough forgiveness and grace to restore everyone. The Bible doesn't really tell us how that story ended. We don't know if the older son joined in the celebration or if he added another brick of offense to the wall in his heart. And the author writes, I think perhaps God left that open-ended so that you and I can determine our own response. Mm. He does give us our own free will after Amen. all, right? So when offense comes knocking, when the bait of Satan appears, how will we respond? Will we trip over the actions of other people, allowing them to create bitterness and distance in our souls? Are we going to allow that to be the boss of us? Or will we allow God's grace to create the heart of Jesus within us? We have choices. Amen. One choice brings torment and frustration. The other brings transformation and joy. For we are never more like Jesus than when we choose to have an unoffendable heart. Amen. Amen. And that concludes this chapter for this week. Amen. It's a lot of great stuff in just a few very short pages, but boy, oh boy. You know, if you need to replay, if, you know, uh, and catch more of that or get it to sink in or make your notes, yeah. by all means. Um, it, when you don't can't have a book or the printed study in front of you, that could make it a bit harder. Yeah. We're fortunate enough that we've got that here. but um, And I did try to order through my living books uh, to, to have here for, for those of us around here the Embracing Trust. There was only one left huh. in stock, so I have one coffee. That's all I have. I tried to get a few more. So if you were local here, um, then you're more than welcome to purchase that copy if you want it um, to come and see me. Or And hey, when it goes, it goes, and that's all I got right now. So um, at any rate. but Or, you know, you can purchase that online, Amazon.ca, you know. Uh, the cost of the book, like if you get the, it's a um, paper back. But it's twenty four ninety five or almost twenty five. I'm sure we could. I'm sure we could. Uh, you know, if you get this one copy here, well, we can. Uh, we can give you a special price on that. Or just go ahead and order it online if you really would like to have it. So, with that, um, any other discussion? I think we kind of touched on yeah. things along the way, and we could. Uh, say a, a good night and a farewell um, we will have to keep you posted I'll tell you um, in the month of August um, could be sporadic for us here um, because after all it is summer people take holidays and everybody needs a bit of a break however however I'm not saying that I won't be able to do some of these studies along the way uh, throughout we'll just um, uh, next week being the uh, the first of August. Is that right? Or am I wrong? Yes, that's right. One week from now, it's the first of August. Can you imagine? Yeah. Gosh, this goes fast. So as far as I can foresee right now, but we'll post the latest. As far as I can foresee right now, I you know I think we can be here and do the study um, for next Thursday on the first of August, uh, the eighth. Probably not, um, because we've had our our youngest granddaughters here for, by that time, it will be about a month. And so my friend and I will be driving the next morning early to take them to meet up with their mother um, in Saskatoon. So I think on the 8th we will not have. 
And so we'll just keep you posted as week by week as we go, um, as long as we remember. But nonetheless, we'll for sure keep you posted if we are going to be here um, and that you could tune in. I know it kind of stretches things out, but hey, you know what? Uh, God's in no rush. Amen. He's eternal. We are eternal beings. And because of that, we get to continue being in relationship and uh, for those of you that may be away yourselves at any rate um, until next week the first of august we will see you then have yourselves a good night and the lord bless you and keep you in fact would you like to uh speak that blessing then ralph I can do that. would you <clears throat> the lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Mm -hmm. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom. Yes. Placing his names upon you. Jehovah Sidkenu, mm -hmm. the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. And Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace and any other of his names that may appro be appropriate in your situation. Yes. Be being blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And good night until next week. Lord bless you.